naught to n counter. So I'm going to show a 3-bit counter using this symbol here. We've got the clock, in, clock input going into uh, the, uh, looks like the clock input for the flip-flop, because that's what it will be. We've got the circle here to show that it's the falling edge of the clock that makes this count up by one each time. And we've got a reset input as well. A is the least significant bit and B is the most significant bit. So if we read it, writing this down, it will be C will actually be written down on the left hand side because that's the most significant bit. To make this out of flip flops, what we do is we get the one bit counter where we've got the clock input going through the inverter, which is what this circle represents. And then we, we put subsequent counters on like this. So this is our three bit counter and outputs A, B and C. So that's most significant bit, the significant bit. Now we need to make the reset connection. And what we do is we connect the resets of each of the flip-flops together. And that's the reset input. So the two ways we can represent what's going on, we've got a pulse, count, uh, a pulse table and we've got the timing diagram here. So we're going to go through the pulse counter first of all. So the first clock pulse comes in, the output's going to go uh, to 0, 0, 001, so it's a count of 1, that's a count of 2 in binary, goes to 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and so it would go up to 8, uh, but 8 is the, uh, the fourth bit being high, so it actually goes back to 0, 0, 0. And looking down a pattern here, we've got A uh, alternates from 0 to 1 every clock pulse, B does a pattern of 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, and C does 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1. The regular patterns going on there. Now, what's going on? Every time we get a falling edge on the clock pulse, A is going to change. And if that change makes A go low, it's going to cause B to go high. And if the change in A makes B go low, then C is going to change as well. So we're up, we've got a count of 0, 1, 2, 3. This is a count of 4. Then we've got a count of 5. We go up to 6, and 7 is where they're all high. And then, finally, falling edge on the clock makes A go low, which makes B change, but that goes low, which makes C change. We're back to naught again. Now, if we connect it up in this way, with an AND gate connected to B and C, and then connect that to the reset, have a look at the pulse table first of all. So we're counting naught, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then we reach 6. 6 is where B and C are both high, and that's going to cause the output of the AND gate to go high, which will reset. So it resets it back to naught, and it carries on 1 and 2. So let's look at this on the timing diagram. So falling edge of the clock makes A change. If that change makes A go low, then B is going to change. So we've got a count of naught, we've got 1, uh, 2. This is the next count of 3. Next count is 4, so C is now high. Then we've got a count of 5 where A and C are high. Now the next count is going to make B go high when C is high as well. And that's going to reset it. So what we find is we get a very, very short spike. Uh, it's going to be a fraction of a microsecond, that spike. And it resets it down. So it gets to 5. Next count we see is back to 0, and then 1. And then it goes to 2 again. And then we've got some examples to show you. So we've got a 4-bit counter here, and if we want to get a 0 to 9 counter, so it counts in binary from 0 all the way up to 9, we've got to get it resetting when it reaches 10. So if it reaches 10, immediately it goes back down to 0, and we can do that by connecting an AND gate here. So when it reaches 10, which is 1010, go back. Uh, when it reaches 10, which is 1010, it's going to reset the counter. Next example is a 0 to 6 counter, so we want it to reset when it reaches 7. So when it reaches 7, almost immediately, uh, within uh, a fraction of a microsecond, it will reset down to 0. So what we need to do when it reaches 7, which is 0, 1, 1, 1, it's going to reset. 